Hello, I am Hunter Roscoe, and today I'll be going over Cal Poly Pomona's AUVSI competition project and our flight readiness review. System overview and plan tasks. So this is our hardware overview. I'll walk you through each component. We have a pick stop using a cube orange for our flight controller. We have a RFD 900 connected to that as, uh, as our Mavlink connection to our ground station. The Mavlink is uh, using the same thing, but connected to a laptop. We have three LiPo batteries, one going to each motor, as well as one powering the pig sock in the servo rail. Under that, you'll see the X8R receiver. This is our telemetry unit, which we'll be using to RC control the aircraft. And the hair GPS uh, module allows us to have our GPS position of the uh, aircraft at all times. The, the GoPro Hero 5 is what we'll be using to capture our images. And our motors are the 500 kV motors uh, from PowerDrive. Moving on, we have our mechanical overview. This has to do with all our servos and where they're being implemented. So our control surface servos are ES350-3054 uh, servos, and the control arm in the connection points is uh, as seen below. They're connected using glue as well as a nail for a bit of redundancy and strengthening. There's also a bead of glue connecting the control surface to make sure we do not lose that. On, on the far right here, we have our nose landing gear and how it is controllable. It has 15 degrees either side of control angle. This just allows us to stay on the runway for both the takeoff and landing. Um, yeah, moving on, we have our software review. We'll be using a uh, mission planner, Ardu Pilot, you know, open source uh, software for our flight controller as well as uh, just the uh, autopilot that the Pixlock's gonna be running. So on the left there is the display, generally of what we'll be seeing, what we'll be able to see easily accessible. Then on the right, there is a planned test mission that we uh, conducted uh, at Spadra Farm here at Cal Poly. And you'll see at the bottom right, we have a takeoff, waypoint, uh, camera trigger, and then goes to the next point. That's kind of our, our uh, recipe. We have not attempted a takeoff due to the risk of aircraft uh, getting damaged. So uh, I'll expand on that further later on. Moving on, we have our task uh, planned. I'll quickly run through what we're going to attempt and then we'll explain the confidence and notes as we go through. So a timeline, we're, we're confident that we're able to get within that timeline. Autonomous flight, we're confident we're able to do waypoint navigation, but landing and takeoff, not so much. Uh, obstacle avoidance, we're not so confident in. Uh, we're not sure how the handling of that is through uh, interoperability. So we're not exactly sure on the details of that. Object test classification, uh, we think we should do manual classification, not, not autonomous classification. And that, that's kind of a, uh, only allows us to get 50% of those points there. Mapping, I'm not going to attempt. Airdrop, we're not going to attempt for uh, overweight reasons. And uh, operational excellence, we're going to go for that one. <laughs> Developmental testing. So starting with the UGV, even though we ended up cutting it, but we did some work uh, testing that. So we tested the hardware components, we manufactured, we built it. But we integrated all the electronics, electronics into it and the control system. We did software testing. It was able to drive around. It did waypoint uh, navigation. So. It's for next year, it's ready. <laughs> but for this year, uh, it's too heavy. UAV, we did component integration. It's built all, all together. We've tested, uh, we did static ground testing for thrusts as well as um, just control surface deflection, make sure everything's going the right way. Did our first RC flight, um, went smoothly. RD pilot uh, mission planner flight has uh, also been conducted as the videos we've submitted to you. Um, and we're, we're, we're focusing on finding our endurance and range for our, our components, as well as our batteries. Finally, we have a camera, which we've done image gathering and training um, on so far, which we'll expand on further later on. So autonomous flight. Uh, out of the flights we've done that are autonomous, 60% of it's not autonomous, because uh, just in time-wise, because of takeoff and landing. Takeoff usually takes a, a bit of uh, making sure we're going down the runway the right way, not lateral excursions in, in, any, in either direction. And during landing, we have a lot of go arounds, touch and goes, because once again, we don't want to damage the aircraft. So 40% of it is just that waypoint navigation that, we're, that we've been testing over our last three flights. Um, so tuning the autopilot was uh, a little bit tricky uh, at first, but we kind of found the easiest way to do it was just by decreasing the range at which the autopilot can command the control surfaces, so our max and min. Uh, if it has, by, by doing this, we essentially decrease the proportional gain that the controller can give to the, the like PIDs of the uh, servos. So 
we don't have so much oscillation in essentially increasing the damping as well. So it, it's, a, it's a lot more steady of slowly nudging the aircraft opposed to just click left, click right until you get to the right path. Moving on, you'll see our, our waypoint performance. So our first test, we only hit one waypoint. Next test, we hit two. Final test, we hit all four. Um, we had steady uh, improvement. This kind of went down to fixing the PIDs as well as um, having better mission training as well as uh, understanding of just how, how we're doing this all. And which led to the 100% success rate of the four, point way, four waypoints uh, in our most recent test flight. Uh, moving on to obstacle avoidance performance. Once again, I'm not sure. We don't really know how it works. If you get, if we get the GPS waypoints, then we can probably do it uh, when we plan our when I do our mission plan. But if it has to do uh, autonomous navigation on the fly, probably not. Image performance. So we are going to do low low level classes with uh, somewhere between 100 and 200 feet, 100 feet being the floor, of course. Uh, having to do more passes, increasing our flight time. Um, we'll take bursts of images to hopefully get a good image within that burst. Uh, trying to avoid some vibration or motion blur. Uh, finally, we'll go to classification detection. We tried a neural network. The neural network didn't work out so well uh, during uh, implementation into the larger system. So we get some. We got some good results, which you can see on the right for the neural network. We're about seventy to eighty percent. But due to the problematic uh, integration into the larger system, uh, we cut it um, and just are going to do mass manual classification for this. And that's 100% accurate at this time because it's, it's people, but there's a little bit of a time crunch there, but I'm pretty confident that we can fulfill that within the 10 minute post-processing time. Uh, localization uh, performance, we don't have a way to tie the pictures to the GPS other than just saying this picture was taken at this, uh, picture was taken at this waypoint area. So it's, it's not accurate enough for the purposes. Mapping, we don't have a way of stitching images together. We know a program for that. Airdrop performance, we did an attempt at airdrop performance. This is a, our, an old parachute in which we used a similar weight to simulate this. But as we've got to cut the UGV, we'll no longer need to be doing this. But once again, for next year, next competition, we're confident that we'll be ready to compete for that. But for this year, it's been cut for a week. So this gets into our, our full mission testing. So the first, we had, we've done several tests, but the first two were problematic because we had a spar deformation, which led to uh, us having to, to fix, uh, stiffen our spar with carbon fiber. Map, mapping software was just incomplete. We need to, the, the cut of it being there. Third test revealed the weight problem, which is what led to the UGV being cut. But we're confident we can do the waypoint navigation with the manual takeoff and landing and uh, some possible success with the obstacle avoidance and we'll take those uh, images as well. So our estimated score is timeline. We're confident we get all 10% there. Autonomous flight, we won't be able to get the full 10% uh, due to our uh, manual takeoff. And docking us that one percent obstacle avoidance. We don't have. Uh, we don't think we'll be able to do that. Just uh, maybe it's a maybe, right? So, uh, object detection, classification, localization, characteristics we can nail because we can look at and see that. So that gives us twelve percent. Uh, everything else is uh, probably not going to happen. Mapping. Uh, we don't have. We don't have this, uh, the code for that. Airdrop has been cut for weight and operational excellence. Well, we like to be optimistic, so we gave ourselves ten for that. And that's our presentation. Thank you.